one of the questions that I'm asked a lot is, should I keep my ISO low or should I be concerned about my ISO going above a certain number on my camera when it comes to photo editing? And really what they're asking me is, how do I keep the noise or the grainy look that high ISO images produce, or at least when I push my sensor above a certain number, how do I keep that low or how do I keep that effect from impacting my overall image? Well, what if I told you that On1 had a software that uses AI local to your machine so you don't have to worry about going into the cloud and having it trained on your images or the AI model trained on your images. And it's also already included with On1 Photo Raw, either the base version or the max version. Well. The answer is no noise AI. And today we're gonna to take a look at how it works and some images that we can compare side by side. We'll also talk about some sensor data, things of that sort. Now, before we go too far down the rabbit hole of no noise AI, I recommend that you go and download a free trial of On One Photo Raw, test it out on your computer. You should also look at the minimum and recommended specifications that you need on your computer in order to make on one run the smoothest. I want to make sure that everyone gets a great experience using the software. So that's the reason why I'm bringing that up. If you download a trial and you want to save a little bit of money, or maybe you already have on one, consider using my coupon code freewillphotos 20 It'll save you some money at checkout. I make a commission and it helps support this channel. I'm really, really appreciative of everyone who uses it. And out of curiosity, I want to know, how do you feel about high ISO images? Are you concerned about using them or are you not concerned because you know exactly how to deal with the noise or do you not even denoise your images? Let me know in the comment section below. Now let's jump into today's video. All right, so here we are inside of the computer and we're gonna go over this really quickly because No Noise AI is probably one of the simplest tools that On One offers to reduce the noise. The cool thing is, like I mentioned, it is going to do it local to your machine. Make sure that you're checking those system specs to make sure your machine is going to work well with the tool. With that being said, some other things that you wanna pay attention to is the camera that you're using. Every sensor deals with higher ISO in different ways. Some, you know, have uh, higher megapixel cameras and it's going to deal with the noise or ISO a little bit different and how it's going to render. Today, I'm using a Sony A92. If you're using a Sony A92, then, you know, this is going to be a very similar result, but yours may vary because you can see right out of camera, I don't really have that much of a noise issue. In fact, I think that this photo would be perfectly fine to share straight out of camera. And I shot this at 25,600 ISO. Now the Sony A92 is designed to work well in low light. And when I tell you I had to shoot this way because uh, the sun was setting and there was literally no light in this area. This is how the light had to be rendered, all right? And I was also shooting this at 5.6. We're not gonna get into all of that, but this was the best exposure for what I was going for in the time that I was capturing this or at the time that I was capturing this. The other thing I wanna note here is I'm working on a raw file. If you shoot JPEG primarily, you wanna make sure that your camera isn't actually rendering a JPEG with noise reduction built into it because on my Sony A92 and many of my other Sony cameras, I have this noise reduction baked into my JPEGs or at least the ability to bake in noise reduction to my JPEGs. You can definitely turn that off, but that's something you wanna make sure you're aware of when you're coming into the editing workspace because that could alter your overall results. With that being said, no noise AI does work on raw images and JPEG images. Let's go ahead and take a look at how to use No Noise AI. When you open up your photo in edit, you can come over to noise and sharpening. This is gonna be located under your 
develop tab. So if you're on effects or anything else, didn't mean to click on sky. So if you're on effects and you know, you want to make sure you're over on develop instead, and then you want to come down to noise and sharpening. Now, by default, we have the legacy method of dealing with noise. We're not going to worry about that because we want to use the AI tool that works local to our machine. No internet connection required. I'm going to go ahead and click on no noise AI, and it's going to look at my image. It's evaluating it at the pixel level. Now, the cool thing about this is it is non-destructive, which means it's not going to change my original image. If I want to revert to the version later on down the line, five days, 10 years, 20 years, whatever it may be, if I want to revert to the version with all of the noise, I'm going to be able to do that as long as I keep the original image and the on one sidecar file that all of this information is being written to. Now, for me personally, when I apply no noise AI and the way that I recommend everyone works with it is when you apply it, zoom out to the viewing range that you are going to look at the image or other people are going to be looking at your image and do the before and after comparison from this view. The reason that I like to do this is unless someone is like going to pixel peep on your image, you don't need to be zoomed in. It needs to look good at the point of how it's going to be presented. It's a personal preference. You let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. With that being said, I recommend 99% of the time you don't even move any of these sliders. Now, if you want to adjust the no noise AI and, you know, kind of get your own little uh, flavor for it, then here's what you could look at adjusting. First one is going to be the actual model that on one is using. There's a few different models here. You can see we have 2024 high detail and then 24 and 23. And then we also have a 23 high detail. Now, every image could use something different. The one that I find to be the best on pretty much every image that I produce or uh, activate this on is the 2024 high detail model. So that's the one that I'm going to leave it on for me. The next thing and the final thing that I recommend that you adjust is the luminance slider. And when you adjust the luminance slider, think of this like of the strength of how much you want on one to reduce the noise or leave the original noise there. Typically, 100% works out just fine, but based off of your camera sensor and you know how much noise you have in your image you may need to adjust that to taste all right but typically 100 percent is going to work out just fine everything else i leave as is and i recommend you do the same that's not me trying, trying to cop out on t what those things do but genuinely there has not been a reason that i found that i need to move these sliders whenever i'm applying no noise ai I like the simplicity of this tool and I think you'll appreciate it as well, especially if you're just starting out and all you want to do is get rid of a little bit of the noise in your image. Once you're done, you'll hit apply. Now, this little lock is just protecting your settings right here on the no noise AI application or instance of no noise AI. It is not destroying your image or baking it into your image indefinitely you will always be able to come back and revert this to the original image with all of the noise inside of it, if you so choose. What you do have to be aware of is when you come to the export, let's say I was to export this as a JPEG from on one, that version of the file that I just exported out of on one, it will have the noise reduction baked into it. And at that point, I will not be able to revert that image to the version with noise in it. But the one that I originally started with, as long as you don't delete that file or remove it from your folders or anything of that sort, you're always going to be able to come back and re-edit that, especially if maybe you just didn't get the look that you were going for originally. If you want to learn more about using On One Photo Raw, go ahead and click the video on the screen now, or consider signing up for a coaching call with me. A link for that is down in the description box below. Until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.